I have to sit there and watch the thing spin for a while until I uh, get some indication. All right, everybody. Hello. Glad to see you. If you're here and you don't mind, uh, type into the uh, comment section and uh, all that. So my face is a little inflamed and um, I didn't sleep very well last night and, and my allergies started coming back and I'm starting to figure it out. I've been doing running some tests on, uh, on my diet and I'm starting to pinpoint it. So I went a couple of days totally clean. Everything seemed to clear up. And then uh, yesterday I kind of purposely binged on some stuff I normally don't eat or that I haven't eaten in a while. And I woke up 12 o'clock midnight just and you can see it's red here. My eyes are. So I think I'm starting to get an idea of what it is. Hello, San Rico in South Africa. Like I said, type in uh, where you are and say hello and we'll we'll get this thing going. I apologize that I'm here in my underwear, but uh, I was doing a workout. I'm trying to get as much stuff done as I can. I have been busy, man. Busy, busy. And then, of course, woke up at 12 o'clock and then tried to get back to sleep. Got up at on time at 3.30, but I I was moving slow because I was so tired. So now I'm trying to catch up on workouts and whatnot. Hey, by the way, if you're here, go ahead and uh, go down into the, the, the ding here and hit the, hit the up, thumbs up button. <clears throat> if you do that, I would, I would really appreciate it. Hello, everybody. Glad you're here. Uh, things are getting weird out there. It's very overcast here in Central Texas. It is 10 o'clock on... April 6th, 2020. And so if you are uh, out there later and you're not watching this live, um, if you would hit the thumbs up button when you get in here uh, or when you're watching it, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I got to say all that stuff and you're going to get tired of me saying it because I'm doing these videos almost every day. But I got to say it because I'm not getting any money. Nobody's donating any money. And so the best I can do is try to get um, YouTube to like recommend the videos more, which they're starting to do. And that happens when you like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. All right. So like I said, things are getting weird out there. Uh, uh, just the, and my main topic, my main rant today is, uh, is like being stuck between the stupid. And this has happened. It has been going on for some, some number of years, but um, because of the hyper segmented, bubble uh, media situation, uh, especially with social media and all that, and people getting their 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 news feeds from these hyper-partisan, um, agenda-driven meme mills, that has carried over <clears throat> into this COVID-19 uh, situation. And so now we find ourselves stuck between the same stupid and it's not uh, it's not universal because I've seen some people kind of where they they're on the right on most things and they're following the left news on this or vice versa. But almost everybody you find is fi is, is falling into one particular camp or the other. And, and those two extreme camps are the stay the edgy home. Uh, government should do something. The go governors need to just and the president need to shut everything down. We need martial law. We need troops on the streets. We need cattle cars. We need the whole thing to this other side who are like, hey, everybody go out there and start licking COVID things because the faster you get it, the better it's going to be. Uh, and so what, what happens is these two extremes, and, and I, I'm, exa I'm exaggerating on both sides, okay, but I'm going to get to the point. These two extremes are incapable. Hello, uh, Tucson. Glad to see y'all. They're incapable of communicating because they they inhale and, and absorb their opinions from outside and they blurt them out without any knowledge or understanding. And they and they and they buy them wholesale. They don't examine any of it um, critically. And and then when they look and they see the other side and the other side is saying the opposite thing, then that uh, validates their biases. Uh, Michigan. Hello. Hello, Montana again. So, um, so what, what happens is, is that you, people get insulated into their little bubble idea of what's going on. And I have said from the very beginning, this is not about the coronavirus. I said, this stopped being about the coronavirus a long time ago. Hey, uh, I'm sorry if I get, uh, alerts come in. 
Um, but it stopped being about that. And it's, it is purely about the reaction now. It's about how people react. It's about how governments react. It's about human psychology. And it's about being way in front of the curve. So if you think that you're, you're imbibing all your, your thoughts and ideas from these certain thinkers who are on this one side of this issue, and you're just blurting those things out on Facebook, that you're changing anybody's mind, you are not. If you think that you're getting all your ideas and, and I, from the mainstream media and you're watching CNN or Fox News or whoever it is and Fauci or whoever, and you're just yelling and screaming for uh, the government to shut everything down and you're going to change somebody's mind, you are not. The best thing we can do, reasonable people, is the first of all is get your ego in check. I'm going to use an example, and it's from a friend of mine who I respect. Uh, we, we, we don't have very much politically in common. He doesn't live in America. But uh, he did a post yesterday, which was interesting. It was his point of view and his right to post. And basically, the post was what you see a lot from that camp, which is all these conspiracy theories that are out there. And he started listing the, you know, oh, this is the 5G towers. This is the... Uh, New World Order, this is the Illuminati, this is, and he listed all these things. And then he made a comment like, hey, you know, this is, uh, most likely this is just this, this thing, and, and it's not some big conspiracy. And uh, I, I, I commented on there simply this, anybody who thinks they know either way needs to get their ego in check, because you don't know. You are just imbibing opinions from people who historically lie to you, the government, the media, the conspiracy theorists, the uh, uh, opinionators who are getting paid by somebody. Uh, everybody's getting their opinions from somebody and you aren't an expert in it. So you're not sitting back there as an epidemiologist or a doctor sitting back there going, well, I examined this article. Everybody has their ammo. Everybody's got their articles. They're pumping. This doctor on the front lines posted this. Oh, yeah, well, this doctor said that they went into an emergency room and it was empty. And these, just these, and everybody's just, if they see something they agree with, they eat it up, you know, like a bowl of uh, Fruit Loops. And if they see something they disagree, they're really, they're mad and they're lashing out. And the whole point is you don't know. You don't know. Come on, don't even pretend like you know. Uh yeah, the masks won't do anything. They only work for medical industry and the sick. Uh, everyone should wear a mask now. Yeah, and it, it, the government has provably lied to you during this event. The conspiracy theorists have provably lied to you during this event. The people who are pushing herd immunity have provably lied to you during this event. The people, the, the, the stuff that is going on, I have, I'm a cattleman. Okay. I've got cattle out here. Sometimes I'm sitting here talking to you and a stampede of cattle will come near, knock my office over. Hello, Pennsylvania. And, uh, the people who are out there, uh, quoting herd immunity, they don't have any cattle. All they know is what they know. What they know is they read something and they agreed with it and it fit their preconceived bias. Now, I have a preconceived bias. My bias is that I believe that uh, America was not founded on the on the idea that if things are bad enough, if things are dangerous enough, that you give up your rights and you give up the Constitution in order to stabilize things. I don't I don't agree with that. Uh, at the same time, there are rational, reasonable things that people should be doing to stop the spread of this virus to an extent. I don't believe you're gonna stop the spread of it. I think you're gonna slow it, but you're not gonna stop. I, don't, I, don't, I do not believe uh, that there's just going to be a miracle cure that's gonna, and maybe I'm wrong, because I'm not an expert. And I say it like 15 times on every video. I'm not an expert on this. Hello, middle of Georgia. But so, so you, you, you fall into a camp and you go, if everybody would just stay home, this thing, that's not true. That is not true. That, that, de that denies a historical 
understanding of this type of virus. What that does is it will slow down the spread of it, which is understandable, and I agree with that. At the same time, you are never going to get the rights back that you give up. Just, just face it, you're not going to. So the people on this side are saying we're doing this because we care about lives and we're not stupid. Suicides are going up. The economy is absolutely collapsing. Like collapsing economies don't cause uh, cost life. Still study 1917, the Soviet Union, if you will. <laughs> if, if a collapsing economy and, and lack of faith in the czar didn't end up in something that ended up with 100 million people dead within 70 years. And yes, the reasonable man is in the house. And so on the other side, perfectly legitimate foundational arguments, uh, you know, that some of the things that they're telling you to do are just stupid. They're just stupid. You know, the, the idea that somehow you're going to close the store down, to, but to a certain amount of people, but everybody else can stand outside and they all are wearing nitro gloves and they're all wearing these masks. And they're taking them off and throwing them in the parking lot or leaving them in their cart and all this other kind of stuff. And somehow you're slowing the spread of a virus. Is ridiculous. The fact that you're, 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 you're telling people to stand six feet apart and the, 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 the um, cashier lanes are three feet apart. Or that you can't stay six feet apart from somebody if you pass them in the store. Uh, a lot of the things they're telling people are completely and utterly ridiculous. Why are they banning books? Why are they telling people that 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 you can't go into the library? Why is the library not essential? I got so many questions, but see, so there's there's legitimate arguments on both sides. But at the yeah, at the very base of them is this idea that somehow, if we give um, paternal government absolute authority. Now, they are raiding people's houses. They are tracking people and how they group together based on their signature from their cell phone. They are arresting people. They are throwing people out of jail to keep them from getting the disease. And then they are arresting people and putting them in jail for violating some kind of orders. Uh, the, the economy is blasted. Your idea that somehow you are saving lives. So, so, so there's the moral superiority, uh, uh, superiority, righteous indignation on both sides. The one side says, if we all just stay home and, and this is your duty. And, and, and let me say something real quick. I want to get back to that. There is a certain amount of wealth and privilege involved in that opinion. And I know people that are not wealthy or that are not privileged that have that opinion who I respect. And like I said, in some ways, I agree with a lot of that. But a lot of people cannot stay home. The, 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 let me just say this, because I want to paint with a broad brush stroke, but I want you to listen to what I'm saying, because I'm not saying every single person that has that opinion. The ma vast majority of Hollywood and rich people and people that were upper middle class who have money, who are able to do a lot of things and able to uh, order in butcher box and order in you know, pizza delivered and order in all, and they're the ones going support your local uh, stores, order in, order in. Um, they have money. They have money. The people who were already living paycheck to paycheck, who didn't know how they were going to make it even before this, who lost their job now and there's no other job for them. They can't stay home. You know, I, I, I actually saw a post from an author on Facebook. Where he said, I had to go to the to the doctor. So I, you know, I, this, I, you know, his, his whole attitude was I had to go do it. And all these people were out there. The government should shut this down and get these people off the road so I can go to the doctor. Do you understand the hubris involved with most of this? Most of the people who are out there, the the stay the edgy home people are historically privileged and wealthy and they don't know it they don't know that they're that that they're sitting there talking to people who cannot afford it who don't have food and they're going to wait eight weeks for a check from the government that has already devalued 
probably 15% just because of the price hikes that are going on and there's fewer things available and they didn't order them when they were available because they didn't have any money. And you have these idiots out there, some of them, some of them are not idiots, some of them are uh, just you know, well-intentioned, who are just screaming for the government to come in and force everybody to do something that's going to further destroy the economy, that's going to further the number of, uh, of uh, suicides, it's going to, and all based on bad science. And on this other side, you got these people that are absolutely convinced that all of this is just an attempt made up or otherwise, to um, get all of the sheep together so we can put them all in camps because that's easier than what you had. Let me explain something to you people. You already had X percent of the society sitting fat and stupid on a sofa watching Netflix or playing video games almost all day. If you're the New World Order... Why do you want it to get worse than that? You're already getting everything you want. You sheared them all in 2008. You're shearing them all now. If you're the New World Order, why is it that you, and I understand the population control arguments, and I'm the guy that's going, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any of this stuff. I'm just saying, listen, I understand that there's these two points of view and those two points of view are extreme and they're not listening to each other. No, both of them have one thing in common. They are arguing about the merits of coronavirus when they can have zero, they have zero basis or foundation to understand the data or any of that stuff. They're just saying what they've been told. The other thing they're not doing is they're not doing the things they could be doing to help themselves and their family and to plan for whatever comes afterwards. They're not. They have that in common. Let me read through this because I've been missing some of this. Uh, stores are roped up that instead of folks being spread throughout the store, they're all squatting. Yeah, absolutely. One of the stupidest things that I've seen is what's going on in stores. And these stores want to stay open. They don't want to be shut down. And they're doing what they're told by some... The very people who you would never want to be in charge of anything in the history of the world are the people that are in charge right now. The question about gardening with heavy deer populations. Can I successfully substitute ammonia for human urine around the perimeter of the garden beds to deter deer? I'm not sure. I, I've never seen that. I just don't know why. You, I mean, human urine degrades into ammonia. I just don't understand why you just wouldn't use it, human urine. Uh, Urine. It's easy to catch for men and women. It's easy to catch. You just get a bucket. So I don't know. Um, the people here in shanty towns cannot uh, not stay home here. They are out in the streets. Yeah. Uh, the people that you see driving around and the people and the people, dumb people in the in the stores lined up and you and, and all these people who are throwing their nitro gloves and their 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 mask and stuff down on the ground. And their wipes down on the ground. These these are not geniuses, but they're also most of them are poor. They, they you can't tell somebody he can only get one package of hamburger meat or one package of eggs for a family of four or five, and not expect him to go to the store almost every day. It's the most ridiculous thing. I, the 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 and most of the the people who are sitting on your city council and your county council and the local governments and all this stuff that are making these rules and at the state le state level, they are horrible people because they ran for office. That's how you know they're horrible. They already wanted to have power over other people. And now they have it and they sit there and, and they stew at the night and they go, you know what we should do? We should do this thing. And now it's a rule. There's no scenario here where a lot of people don't die. There's no scenario. And, and it's not quantifiable either way. If you think everybody's going to stay home, the virus is going to disappear on its own, and then everybody's going to come out, and we're not going to see that thing fire up again or some form of it or another one or something else like that, you're, you're just not paying attention. Even the experts are saying that that's going to happen. And if you think if everybody just went out, we were going to get herd immunity, 
within a couple of weeks or something and that we're not going to see uh, the, the 100 or 200,000 deaths or worse or that the economy is just going to even that just going to recover because everybody goes back to work. There's a lot of death going on in either way. Let me catch up here. The anti-humanists who always say there are too many people should voluntarily get themselves <laughs> infected. Yeah, maybe they already have, though. Maybe that's how they got immunity. Uh, you can't get your head around $2 billion. Try $22 trillion. That's the size of the economy. So many people buying up yeast, it's not in store. So I plan on growing my own sourdough and yeast. Beautiful idea. Beautiful idea. And you know what? It's in my book, The Last Pilgrims. If I saw a copy right now, I would grab it. The Last Pilgrims. Um, you can grow yeast and the yeast, especially in the making of very natural, old school, uh, historic uh, beer. And that uh, yeast has natural, very natural antibiotic uh, properties that can, can save people's lives. Not against a virus, but there's other things that work against viruses. Uh, and just, just in time supply chain with proportional rationing. Yeah. Uh, all politicians are bad and, and all, anybody who there's see every time you, you have politicians, you had three or four people who wanted that job. They're just as bad. I'm going to get into marking people in a minute. I still got some things I got to cover infrastructure, stability and whatnot, but I want to go through. Yeah. People need to be getting ready for round two, but you need to get, be, be getting ready for a broad expanse of possibilities. Um, which I'm going to get to in just a minute. My son who lives with me works in the supermarket. He sees this happening every day. Yeah. Hello, Zachariah. Uh, I'm going to say Zachariah. Uh, we have yeast, but no flour in the shops. Yeah. Um, can you please tell my mate happy birthday? His name is, I can say it. <laughs> uh, Ligma. Ligma, happy birthday. Uh, yeah, $2 trillion. All right, y'all, get some questions. Put them in the comment section if you have questions. I got a few other things I want to talk about. So this morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning, I was trying to get going. I was really, really slow. And uh, uh, and I was sitting there thinking that you should go down there and hit the uh, like button right now. Right now, just go hit the like button. But I was sitting around this morning, and I put the radio on. And for the first time, I actually heard, and it was some... 4 a.m. radio show. Don't even know where it was located. Um, hit the like button. The, they were uh, admitting that there are vulnerabilities. Oh, I, I, tr I, I trimmed this yesterday. It looks horrible. There are vulnerabilities in the um, in the internet in the internet infrastructure that are already starting to show. And they were going through some of the things that. Uh, experts in the field have been talking about the fact that more people are doing Zoom for their businesses, for homeschooling, for meetings with their family, for uh, family night out, for or, or cyber night out, for uh, family happy hours, for uh, and, and FaceTime, and more people watching Netflix, and uh, th this is putting a strain. And Again, this really comes down to the human element, and I've talked about this on several videos, uh, and we're seeing that strain happen across the board on the grid-based utilities, That uh, and things have not gotten as bad as they're going to get. Uh, so, uh, 10 days, 11 days from now, things are going to be completely different than they are now. Think back 10 days. Transfer your mind back 10 days. This is why I've been beating on people about the way that you think about getting prepared, about doing the right things, about thinking what you're doing, about not getting caught up in the dialectical nonsense that's going on and stop investing your time into listening to two uh, bullheaded groups arguing with each other and apply yourself to prep preparing for it getting way worse than it is now. I'm not saying it's going to get way worse. I'm saying you're a fool if you don't think it's going to get way worse and you're not planning for it. I want it to get better, right? Hollywood's making a movie about my book. Things were going great. Uh, I want things to get better. I would love for things to go back the way they were. Just selfishly, I would love for things to go back the way they were. But I don't plan for that. That's foolish. 
Uh, all right. Heard about any food processing plants closing for various reasons? Uh, not so much. I have heard that there have been a run on some of the um, – there are food banks that also have food processing for, for uh, food that's being donated. And the biggest thing I'm concerned about is the commercial farmers not putting in crops or uh, – People who are plugged into the supply chain, uh, companies and small businesses dropping out. So the supply chain is very, very um, subject to every single, the just-in-time supply chain, everything working right, right? And so when one thing goes wrong, then you can have a cascading effect throughout the supply chain. And I'm starting to hear some of that, that, that the supply chain is just basically blasted trying to get it up and running again is going to be very difficult because a lot of the things take years of planning to have those things available just in time. Uh, reporters asking, why are grocery stores allowed to be open? See, yeah, you, <laughs> you have to turn off the media. And, and I'm being serious here. You have to turn off the media. You just have to. It doesn't mean you don't get news. I don't get my news from the media. I said this the other day. I have not listened to a Fox News broadcast. I have not listened to a CNN broadcast in years, years. Um, the most I've heard is 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, excuse me. I'm 10, or, 10 or 15 seconds, probably. I listened to one uh, Fox News broadcast when I got to my parents' house on the day of the Mueller report because I was just interested to see what was going on. You're, you're, you're foolish if you're getting your news that way. There's two people that are watching that. There are people who agree with it and they're trying to get riled up because the other people are idiots and we got to do away with the idiots. And you got the people who are watching stuff they don't agree with because those people are idiots and they want to know what those idiots are saying. You really, really have to turn that crap off. Uh, I'm going to give some advice here in a minute on if somebody will remind me about how to get better news. Uh, gas is cheap, but there's nowhere to go. That's true. Are you still able to buy seeds there? Yes. Uh, and in fact, I did a video yesterday you might have missed. And I held up some seeds and I put a link. Yesterday's video has a link on some seeds that were still available. Ordered the seed bought from Amazon that has 1,000 of heirloom USA meat seeds, but won't get here for another month. Even in another month, it's better than not having them. Your local stores may have seeds. Um, it's raining. I got... I got my own problems because it's it's rained here since Jan, since January 1st. I mean, I don't think we've gone two or three days. It's not dry. It, it's not been dry more than a day or so before it's rained again. And because of that, it's overcast. I'm not getting much solar. A um, lot of stuff going on. Uh, seeds are going off the shelves very fast. Some places are even stopping people from buying seeds. Um, but you listen to Michael Bunker gather in my friends you have to make this a mission this has to be the most important thing that you're doing for you and your family you have to find out and go watch my last six to ten videos daily videos you will find lists of stuff that i did a video yesterday called seven things you need to be doing right now you need to make those things a mission which means you don't let anything else stop you you can't let things stop you so you have to think outside of the box. You have to uh, talk to gardeners, talk to farmers, market people. You have to, if you need seeds, you need to get seeds. Don't mean steal them. I don't mean do anything illegal or immoral. I'm just saying they're out there and, and, and it's time to do. You should have been doing this back when I was talking about this two weeks ago. And, and the stuff I'm saying people to do now, you're not doing. People are not doing it. Baby chicks are sold right, sold out nationwide as well. Yeah, um, that's true. But there are farmers who are raising chicks. I've run into them. I've seen um, people here have posted in different places that that have chicks or raising chicks. People don't want to get inundated with a million people trying to look for something. So a lot of times they're just networking. Uh, right now, we're getting way more eggs than we can eat. And I'm using it mainly, mainly for pig feed. Cause I don't want to put it out there that I got a million eggs. And, and right now the grocery store has eggs, but they're only letting people get one carton of eggs. 
you know, and those eggs aren't any good anyway. Something is going on with the water. I haven't gotten any local alerts. Every single grid based utility is at serious risk right now at serious risk because of the stress of maintaining it because of the uh, because of the use more people are using water more people are using the toilets more people are using are at home doing stuff they're not normally doing the system was not designed to operate this way same thing with the internet same thing with power we haven't even gotten to the heat of the summer yet uh, people need to be getting ready uh, feed stores have seeds i've been saying that for while check out the feed stores check out the uh find the contact of the farmer's market and try to get involved in that network all right um banking i'm hearing more and more about people who are concerned about the uh, how money is going to operate or continue to operate because banking is one of the most subject We're, we have a whole lot of problems as always in the banking sector and uh, most banks like our bank have closed except for the drive through window. Uh, that could be closed. Um, you have a tendency uh, to want to move away from cash because they call that a vector for disease. Um, I would not be surprised to see an instantaneous rollout of a digital currency or something that is, um, this would be a perfect time for the government to nullify any uh, personal savings in cash or uh, in other, uh, and I'm not talking about today or tomorrow, I'm talking about soon. And when I say something like this and I throw it out, I'm not saying it's because it's something I know, but if you follow these videos going back two months, I've been so right <laughs> about a lot of these things. Uh, slowly getting on the bunker principle supply since I started following you, excellent, excellent. Um, and so, um, at the same time, um, you know, I'm not, oh, I get called, I get called a pessimist. I have a quote and I don't know where to find it. It's in this book, which is the book you should be reading surviving off, off grid by Michael Bunker. And I have a quote in this book. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to have to paraphrase it because I don't remember it exactly, but basically, Telling the truth or believing the truth is never pessimistic, never, because it opens up the panorama of options and solutions. All right. It is not pessimistic to say what I believe, which is that I believe things are going to get worse. And I've been saying that and I've been right. And I've been saying that for 20 years and I've been right. It's not pessimistic at all. It's optimistic because it allows you to accept things the way that they are, not the way you wish them to be, and to look and see the panoply of options, the plethora of options that are available to solve the problems. It will be a sad day, and I'm not trying to get too far into what will happen if some of these things they try, uh, what, what the human reaction is going to be, because it will not be good. But um, these are things that I'm hearing some rumblings of. And so um, th this is not a gossip center. What we try to do here is we try to look at the day and we look at the, the what's going on in the world and try to stop people from veering off into stupid. To, to be reasonable, to think reasonably and to um, accept reasonable solutions and to get to work, get to work and stop sitting there frozen listening to your bubble talk and uh, hoping somebody else is going to fix things for you. That's right. All right. So if you all have questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the comment section um, because I need to get those in because I got stuff I need to do. Things have been very, very uh, hectic for me. I've been getting up, as I said, early and going to bed later than I should be going to bed. And I'm trying to get a video up every day. I'm trying to produce videos that I need to be producing for some of the things that I've promised you. Um, I put yesterday, I told everybody if you could go to, and it's in the comments, excuse me, in the, the description down here, there's a donation deal. And of course, nobody donated. And so what happens is there are things that I could really use. I don't need any of this. I could throw all of this away. I could turn off the office and never even come back down here. 
and I'm going to be fine. Uh, a good friend asked me the other day, how long do you think you can stay out there? Nobody knows. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, theoretically, indefinitely. I mean, I know how to do stuff. I know how to survive. I, that's what I've been doing for 15 years without going to town. But um, the thing is, it's like um, I don't need any of this stuff. I'm not getting paid for the YouTube videos. I'm not monetized. By the way, we're getting close to 3,300 watch hours. And I've been telling you all 4,000 watch hours is what you need to start getting monetized. And so it, it's a slow process. But the more you like the videos, the more you share the videos, the more that you help out. But in the meantime, if anybody can go into that description section and click on that uh, support button, a donation button, just a little bit here and there. I'm trying to get I, I, sh I did a whole video on the Yeti 150 goal zero power box it is great i've loved it i've had it for a year year and a half i've given my whole wholesale thumbs up to it the problem is when i do what's going on right now and what's going on this whole year two three four days with no sun whatsoever um i try to eke out just enough power like right now and yesterday i ran on my system here so i can make videos off the car as long as the car is running and so while that's going on i'm charging my little goal zero if I could do that and I had the Goal Zero 400 Yeti, it would actually last for maybe two days, which would allow me to extend my ability to do these things until the sun comes out. It looks bright right here, but it is very, very overcast. There's no, there's no blue in this. It's all gray and it's, it's actually raining right now. Uh, we've been told that there is no problem with supply. Why have the store shelves not been refilled? Uh, there's a couple of different ways you can go with that. Um, and I don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but I'm just going to tell you different things people will tell you. Uh, like I said, there are holes in the supply chain. First of all, you have to start off by believing the rumor that there that there's plenty of stuff. In some cases, there may be. Uh, second of all, there are humans involved, which means almost certainly there's some corruption going on. Almost certainly people are politically directing uh, materials where they think that more, more most likely to go. There are there's always a human element involved, whether it's uh, organized crime, whether it's uh, just people just doing what they think's best. Um, I had a uh, uh, anecdotal story early on here in our little town. Uh, there was toilet paper, there was everything, and then the next day it was all gone, and that it was not people running in and buying it, but that somebody came from Dallas and bought it all up. And uh, there has not been any since that day. Um, and I, I have a feeling that that stuff's being being siphoned off. Uh, not saying anybody doing anything crim criminal. I'm just saying people make decisions. Uh, we have to just we, we the safe and uh, moderate ego thing to do is to say we don't know. We don't know why that stuff's happening. Could be really bad. Could be. Uh, the times that I've been in the store, the store is fully stocked of everything but toilet paper. The store that's near us, pretty much fully stocked. Last time I was in, there was no nine millimeter ammo, and there was no, and they sell it in the grocery store, and there was no, uh, no toilet paper. Everything else was stocked. There was limitations on some stuff that you couldn't buy. None of that stuff I would buy anyway. Uh, facing reality is never pessimistic. Believing the truth, no matter how difficult they may be is the ultimate act of optimism because it opens up the panorama of options that will free us. That's the quote directly from surviving off off grid. If everybody goes and gets this book, by the way, and gets it and gives it to somebody else, or if you've already read it or you already have it, that sure would help Michael Bunker too. surviving off off grid. It's also available in audio book. Sorry that you were 25 minutes late. Hope the sound is okay. I didn't even plug my microphone into that. I had so much stuff going on. Uh, is solar worth the investment in the long run? Do batteries last a decent amount of time for the price? Uh, that's a big, broad question because it depends on what you mean. Um, a small scale, a small scale solar is very much worth the price. And by small scale, I mean 100 to 300 watts, 400 watts, uh, with just a few, you know, a few batteries. Uh, you can get in for uh, thousand, two thousand, twenty five hundred dollars or so or less. And it's very worthwhile, and you can replace those batteries without going broke. 
Uh, most of those batteries, if you're not getting high-end solar batteries, last about five years, uh, which gives you time to, to buy more batteries or whatever you need. Uh, when you get into high-end solar, it's outside of my realm of expertise because I've never been able to afford anything like that. But it is worth the price on the on the uh, on the small scale side. I highly recommend people go out there and they get something like what I'm talking about, a power backup system like the Goal Zero. Links in the description. Um, and uh, a small solar array, you can get them at Harbor Freight. I've got a link in the description for the Renogy um, 100 watt one that's on Amazon. There's an actual 100 watt panel that goes. Is made to go with the um, Goal Zero. I put that on my Facebook uh, today. Um, so those things are definitely worth the price. It's expensive, but you're talking about less than a thousand dollars, and having a power backup that will last you years and years and years. Uh, Facebook says sending money is not available right now. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Uh, I don't know why that's not available right now, but it's part of what we're dealing with. Thanks for uh, going through the website. Anybody else, if you want to uh, do a donation, I sure appreciate it. Um, just click on in the description section, click on support Michael. And that stuff is going to really help me keep doing these videos and helping people. All right. So if there's more questions, let's get them in there. I'm going to wait just a few minutes. And then um, so the, what I was talking about, the banking system is, is and what they're going to do with money is questionable. Um, what happens? And what has already started to happen, but what is going to happen increasingly, and this is a prediction, and I talked about this two weeks ago, is the development of the black market. People that have goods, have the ability to make goods, have the ability to produce goods, are not going to want to pump those goods into a system by which their money is being devalued day by day by the printing that's going on. And if they go to another form of currency, they're not going to go into that form of currency and they're going to decide to distribute their goods themselves, whether that's against the law or not. You see the development of a black market, which has a, a natural response by the uh, a criminal and tyrannical authorities of trying to squash that black market and make those things illegal. And this is a, a, a pattern that developed. You can study it very, very in depth if you want to go study prohibition. But it happens every time. And it is we, what we are seeing right now is a world changing epic that is on par or bigger than 9-11. And we are going to see the development of the black market. If you think that that's bad, that's your opinion. Whether you think it's bad or not, it's just like whether you think coronavirus is bad or not. Don't care. Coronavirus don't care. I don't care. Uh, it's going to happen. And so some of you might start thinking that way because it might be a, a benefit to you to start looking into alternative ways of uh, acquiring uh, things that would help you stabilize your area. Do you know anyone that sells uh, traditionally cured meats? If you did, I'd buy a ton. Um, yes. Uh, depending on what you mean by a ton, private message me on Facebook. And um, I have the, as you know, <laughs> I, I have a huge 12 foot by 12 foot smokehouse and I have a bunch of pigs and I have cows and whatnot. And I, it, it, I, it, it would take several weeks and it would take some uh, investment. But uh, the other thing uh, you can do is contact a uh, there's it's they're online and they're on Facebook. It's a um, and they may be expensive. I don't know. I'm going to have to write it down because it's hard to and I'm going to hold it up so you can read it, it may be backwards. Veldhusen. This is where it starts. B-E-L-D-H-U-I-Z-E-N. Veldhusen. And this is a dairy and market in Dublin, Texas. And they, uh, from last I saw, they are still shipping meat. They are still shipping cheese. They're so uh, it's 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 high end stuff. It's not cheap. But if you're if you're if you're looking for something more uh, long term, it not uh, so much artisanal in that it's not going to. Um, it's not going to be served at a party, maybe, but if you're looking for something that's shelf stable that could be here 15 years from now and you could eat it and be secured that way, uh, contact me and we can talk. Um, uh, Veldhusen means bush house. Yeah, I think they're 
Dutch. I think they're Dutch. Been out there several times, met the guy who runs the place. Um, very interesting. So I got about less than 15 minutes. I want to answer your questions. I want to do the, the, the and I want to tell everybody right now, if you would go down and click the, how you want to, how many, what kind of um, alerts you want to get, click all. And then when I'm doing this, they'll let you know what's going on. And you don't want to miss something because several things that I've told people, if you go out right now, you can get it. And people have gone out and got it. They're not available anymore. If you're watching these videos every day, you are getting stuff before everybody else starts figuring this stuff out. Uh, second thing you can do is, and I mentioned it just a while ago, is you can uh, click that support button and uh, make a donation. Even if it's $5, it's, if it's more, that's great. Uh, if you can send it through uh, Facebook private message, there's no fees either way. And the money is immediately available, but that's fine if you can't do that. Uh, any, any donation will help and it will help me continue to do these videos in the environment that we're in. All right. I'm waiting for questions and comments. If I don't get any and then I get uh, uh, impatient and then I start thinking about other things I could be doing. Like one of the things I'm going to be doing today is cleaning out this whole area. And I have found in the last two days, I have found uh, two N95 masks. I have found an entire box of nitrile gloves and I found a deal of um, hand sanitizer, which I, I, the reason I have it is because I stopped using it because I think it's toxic. Um, but uh, I, I know that there's a bunch of things I'm looking for that I can't find. And I'm putting together a few videos, so I'm going to be cleaning this area later on today if I can get out because it's raining right now. I actually do have to go to town because of some things that I would like to have for a video. I'm going to sacrifice myself. I'm going to uh, take one for the team. I'm going to hand sanitize up. I'm going to put on a face mask and goggles, put on some Googles. and. Uh, I'm not putting on goggles, but I am going to put on a face mask and I'm going to go to town and then I'm going to report back to you tomorrow and you're going to get the skinny on what's going on. Kirk, about the meat, I got another idea too. contact me through Facebook private messenger. And I, I think I have several ideas. Uh, all right. Anybody else? I've not seen any comments. Starting to get impatient. My, my mind starts going, you know what you could be doing right now? All right, y'all. Looks like that's going to be it. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Lord willing, I will be here again, if not later today, then tomorrow. Make another video. We'll talk about stuff that people need to know. Please share the video, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Donate if you can. Talk to you guys soon. Love you.